Joe's old tech. Yesterday's tech of tomorrow. Today. Today we are talking about VHS. Uh, yes, for you VHS aficionados, this is a uh, Warner big box copy of Al Pacino's Dog Day Afternoon. Lovely Warner case, but yeah, we're going to be talking about VHS. I want to start off by giving a plug to this book here, More Than Just a Video Shop by Lynn J. Cobb. I recommend this book. It's a really uh, fun, interesting and poignant read about uh, Lynn and her husband Trev, who set up a, a video shop in um, Hove in East Sussex and then ended up having about seven stores located around the area. But it's just a, a great book talking about about starting a business, starting a video shop and the challenges that they had, you know, when things like Blockbuster came along, when DVDs came along and downloads and that kind of thing. But I just, I would really recommend this. You can get it on eBay. They're selling it on eBay. And the profits go to pancreatic cancer research. So another really good reason to get this book. So hunt it down because it's, um, I got this one on eBay and I think there's only one eBay store selling these, so uh, it's called More Than Just a Video Shop by Lynn J. Cobb, and I recommend it. Some good pictures in there from the, their heyday. They used to do a lot of uh, promotions and things, and uh, did a lot. Tomorrow's World was the name of the shop. If you were familiar with East Sussex and Hove and around the area, you probably uh, went there yourself. But yeah, so I recommend that this book. And uh, if they have got more, because they had sold out, I think they had sold out when I got my copy, but if there is a link that I can find for it, I will post out another video. And if it's not there now, when I do eventually find one, I will uh, put the link in there. So, yeah. Okay, so videos. Videos, videos, videos. Now, there's a, it's quite a resurgence in uh, fans of VHS. This is an original Warner big box copy of Dog Day Afternoon, as I say, which I've had since uh, I bought it in the 80s. Uh, actually, probably early 90s, actually, that one. Because I used to have hundreds and hundreds of videos. Like many people, when DVDs came along and when I was moving house and stuff, I stupidly got rid of a lot of my collection. I mean, looking back now, I mean, I've really... That's, that's the one problem with videos, they do take a lot of storage, but I didn't have a lot of space. So I ended up actually getting rid of 600 odd videos. Um, when I went to the uh, charity shop I gave them to, um, they actually asked me if I'd run a video shop because I had so many of them. I know some people now have thousands of them in their collection, but uh, yeah. So I did have quite a few, but I, I've kept a lot, especially these sort of Warner big box copies. I've mainly kept... I've got a lot of early Al Pacino and Robert De Niro films. Here's another Warner big box copy. This is of the Robert De Niro and Robert Duval film, True Confessions. So yeah, I've kept all my copies of the early De Niro and Pacino films, two of my uh, acting heroes. Um, but the first video I ever bought, and I've still got it, I wouldn't get rid of this one, is Nightmare on Elm Street. Now this is the CBS Fox All Time Greats. Let's go in focus. There we go. All Time Greats release, which was in 1988. I actually uh, got hold of this before we even had a video. We were quite late adopters to video because we were pretty expensive and we couldn't afford one at the time. So I actually got this video before we actually had a machine to play it on <laughs> because I was a big fan and I just wanted to own it. And that's the thing, isn't it? With videos and DVDs, you can own your favourite films. Nowadays, it's all about streaming and uh, you know downloads and stuff no one really owns anything anymore you don't really have a, a film collection anymore you don't really have a music collection most people have got rid of their vinyl and cds not me i've always been someone who likes physical media so i've still still got all my cds i've ever had and all my lps and vinyl and singles i'd never get rid of those either it's just i like having a physical copy and that's the thing isn't it video shops as uh Lynn J. Cobb talks about in her marvellous books book. They are more than just a video shop. The video shops are they were part of the community. I used to work in a video shop in the late 80s and early 90s. 
it was called Videodrome and uh, God, it was the best job I ever had. I could just uh, stick a film on that I wanted, eat some sweets, serve the customers of course and have my mates come in and you know I was surrounded by videos. It was just, ah, oh, it was bliss. And they, obviously they had a lot of old videos out the back which they didn't rent out anymore so I had, uh, I had my pickings of those. But there really is, I think, you know, all technology moves on. And when technology moved away from video, suddenly everyone, you know, like I did, everyone just got rid of their, their videos. Obviously, I kept, I've still got about 100 or so uh, VHS, so I didn't completely get rid of mine. But it's just bizarre, really, isn't it? If you think about it, how a whole format has just almost been forgotten. A format which was so so popular, everyone had a video. As I say, we didn't go until quite late because, they were, you know, they were quite expensive, but, you know, pretty much everyone had one by, uh, you know, in the 90s. But now everyone's just seemed to have trashed them. They've thrown them out, they've thrown out the videos, even charity shops won't accept VHS anymore. But I think it's a real loss to the community because, um, as Lynn J. Cobb says in her book, about, they used to put on a lot of uh, charity events and... Uh, she talks about the characters that used to come in, the customers and all the events they used to do when they were promoting new videos, new films and later new DVDs and games. And we don't have that anymore, do we? Without video shops, it's just one less place to go to, especially when you're growing up. When I was, a, when I was growing up in my early teens and uh, you know, before, you know, it'd be great to go in a local video shop and just browse and have a look at the, the covers and stuff. Here's another favorite the stepfather on big box um obviously running a video shop was very expensive i mean look how much one tape cost this is a rental ex rental copy of the stepfather and it was 80 pounds <laughs> just for one tape so if you ran a, a small independent video shop if you're a blockbuster obviously they didn't you know they had loads more money to sort of splash around but in the the uh, independent video shops just buying a video to rent was quite a was quite an outlay. Eighty pounds, you know, that was a that was a lot of money. And if someone rented it out and it got chewed up in their machine, <laughs> then uh, yeah, you were stuck then, really, weren't you? But you know, there's some there is something about the physical media, isn't there? Here's another one. The Changeling on uh, VTC Video Tape Center release there, nice big box. Classic film. I mean, that was the thing. You'd go into a video shop. I remember going into a video shop with my mate Dan. We always used to get out um, Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. Um, his dad had a Betamax machine, which we'd watch them on. I remember sort of taking a mickey out of him about uh, Betamax. Obviously, everything went VHS, but Betamax were better, weren't they? And uh, now I'm hoping to get hold of a Betamax machine one day, which obviously made my mate Dan laugh after all the uh, mickey taking. Nice to give it him about that. Yeah, this, I mean, it's just having that physical copy of a film in your hand, having a whole video film collection that, you know, every, if you just fancy a film, you can just browse your collection and watch one of your favourites or, you know, get hold of a new one you haven't seen. Whereas now, I think it's, it's more, I think we've traded community for convenience in a lot of ways, haven't we? Because getting a video out used to be a really big event. I remember when I was a kid, you know, having a sleepover at a mate's house or something, that was a really big thing, we know, we'd go, we'd all go down to the video shop, check out the releases and, uh, you know, in these sort of pre-cert days, all the certification, you know, you could get out anything. I remember we got out, uh, we were in our, I don't think we were even teenagers and we got out City of the Living Dead, which was, uh, <laughs> which was pretty full on at the time. But that was the thing, wasn't it? Going to video shops, looking at the covers, you know, sometimes what you wanted wouldn't be in and you'd have to wait. You know, it wasn't this it's instant gratification these days, isn't it, with downloading, you know, you just it's so impersonal, isn't it? Just sort of scrolling through on your you know on your uh whatever film site, I won't name any, but you know the ones, you know, just scrolling through hundreds and hundreds of little pictures of covers, but that you don't get covers like this anymore, do you? Look at that. Look at the artwork. And the changing and uh and Nightmare on Elm Street, I mean, look at that artwork, brilliant. Actually hand-painted artwork. You know, I think we've really missed something in getting rid of video shops. I know there's only one, now there's only one Blockbuster left. It's kind of a double-edged thing, isn't it? Because Blockbuster, 
obviously put a lot of smaller independent stores out of out of business. I think also DVDs didn't help because once films on DVD, there were a lot of pirating happened, didn't it? But we've we've missed something. I think you know everything's online, everything's digital, everything's downloads. It's the same with same with record shops. You know, when I was younger, apart from and it sounds like when I was a lad, but I think it's true. You know, there was there was more places to go as a kid. You could go to a record shop, and uh, you know you could listen to listen to the you know the album by by your favourite band. You know, their new album. You know, I remember going to a midnight um, listening sort of party of uh, Pearl Jam's second album, Vitalogy. Was that second album? No, third album, wasn't it? Verses was it? anyway. <laughs> Like their Vitalogy album, and uh, yeah, that was at midnight. And that was great. And then obviously, uh, once uh, it came to midnight, we could all buy it. So we all bought it on uh, on vinyl. And you know, you could you could just go there on a Saturday. You know, you might have some pocket money. You could go and buy a go and buy a single, or uh, you know, rent a video out. It was just that was just two more places to go. Whether it's you know, an independent record shop like I used to go to Fives. There's one. There's one. There's a Fives left in Lee in Essex. Or you know, Woolworths. You know, you could look at the videos in there and the uh, buy singles in there and albums and tapes, cassettes. And that's all gone now. It's all down. You know, it's just all on your phone or on your computer or on your streaming on your TV. But it's just, it's not the same, is it? It's not the same. I've got a. Um, and I really do think we've lost something in uh, not having video shops or movie rental shops anymore. This is a copy of Home Video magazine from January 1982 with not, a kind of, not the 9 o'clock news team on there, but this kind of... Uh, yeah, look, this was in 1982. This was like the early days of, of Home Video. They're trying to get... Yeah. This is a company called Fletcher Video. Um, I've never actually heard of them, but obviously they had a lot of foreign titles, a lot of Italian titles, obviously repackaged and sold on the, uh, in the UK, UK market. Obviously this was before the days of certi certification. So pretty much anything went back then. I mean, look at this great advert for Guild Home Video. Look at these big box beauty. Look at that. See, it was about having a video collection or renting a video. It was it was a big thing, wasn't it? You know, you could uh, it was it was a family thing. It was something else you could do as a family, couldn't it? On a on a Friday night or Saturday in the day, you could go to your local video shop and you know pick out a video for the weekend. And now that's gone. What's it now? Scrolling through images on a screen and streaming it. I mean, yeah, that is more convenient, but it's not special, is it? You know, I'm sure in the future that will be gone as well, replaced by, I don't know, having a film injected straight into your head or something. Um, oh, look at that, look at that. Classic big box uh, scanners. Scanners, that was always a film. That's one of those classic covers, isn't it? I always remember that in the video shop. I'm thinking, wow, that looks amazing. Look at that, some more big box beauties there. Wild geese, cabaret, sea wolves, Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda Triangle was a massive thing in the... In the late seventies and early eighties, um, talking of Betamax, here's an advert for the the new Sony C7. So yeah, video machines were just starting to come out. It was a bit of a war between Betamax and VHS, and also Video Two Thousand, which was Philips and Grundig's uh, attempt at home video, which were uh, which didn't take off as well as VHS. Obviously, once the uh, porno companies got involved. They opted for VHS over beta, and the rest is history. BBC Video, BBC got in on the uh, video releasing antics, but uh, yeah. So, what else? What do I want to show you in this? I want to show you. Oh, here's something I've, ne I've never, never heard of before. A cover for your video. Why would you want to cover up your video machine? <laughs> I mean, is that not tidy enough? You need to have a, a video cosy cover up. Multi video cover. Bizarre. I suppose, it, I suppose if anything, but you know, there's accessories you can get for them. That just seems to be an odd one. It's Archie, I release a new. So here's all top loaders in those days. Stick the video in the top. 
But uh, yeah, so you know, that's the latest innovation in video tape. This was Super Avalin HG. So yeah, what more is there to say really? I just think I think we really have lost something with the uh, the demise of the video store, the movie rental store, um, with everything being online. You know, we've seen the demise of the video store, the record shop. It's just a shame. Two less places to go as a family, two less places to go as a kid on your own with your mates, you know. I think we have lost something. It's becoming more sort of... Uh, more sort of solitary, isn't it? Just scrolling on a tablet or a... <laughs> I don't know. I sound, like, I sound like a grumpy old man. Maybe I am. But, you know, I still love VHS. Like a lot of people, you know, you know I moved on to DVD and Blu-ray. I haven't gone on to 4K because that's just ridiculous, isn't it? But, yeah, I'll never get rid of these VHSs. And I'll never stop watching them. Because there is a certain magic in getting a tape... Selecting a tape, I mean just holding it in your hand and knowing that inside that box is a movie. <laughs> Open it up, there we are. It's the virgin release of The Stepfather. On that tape is that film. You know, you stick it in your machine and away you go. Brilliant. As you can probably hear now, it's raining outside. Raining tears for the demise of the video shop. But there are a few... Um, there's a, recently in Liverpool, a shop called Video Odyssey has opened up. Uh, you can find them on Facebook. And also in Bristol, there's a shop called 20th Century Flicks. So check them out on Facebook as well. Follow them if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, this is just my little video about the demise of VHS and video shops. I think it's a real shame. We've lost, as I say, we've traded community for convenience. And everything seems to be going that way. But I think there is going to be... I hope there'll be a return to sort of more physical media because it's just, it's special, isn't it? It's more special than just downloading something or just streaming something. Because there's so much, I remember I got a, a um, there was a promotion and I got a 30-day a Netflix um, sort of try before you sign up sort of thing, account. So, but there was just so much stuff and it was just too much stuff. It's like... You know, at least in a video shop, yeah, it was it was finite. There was videos videos on the shelves. Yeah, they had a back back catalogue of videos, but you could, you know, the cover would leap out, and you'd think, yeah, I really want to see that. Sometimes it was in, and you could get it out, brilliant. Sometimes it was out, and you'd have to wait. But that made it more special. Now there's just so much choice on these streaming sites. It's like I think the only thing I actually ended up watching on Netflix when uh, we had it was uh, a couple of episodes of Bob Ross, the uh, brilliant artist. Because there was just so much stuff, it's like, I really couldn't be asked. <laughs> I just couldn't be bothered. There was just so much choice. It's like anything you could, pretty much anything you could think of. But when you've got so much choice like that, it's like, well, I don't know. <laughs> Infinite choice is not always best, I don't think. So there we have it, VHS. It lives on. Um, there's several Facebook groups that I'm a member of on uh, VHS. Obviously, a lot of people probably around about my age. I'm in my forties now. Um, still love VHS and um, will continue to love it. It's like vinyl, I suppose. People say, "Oh, well, VHS is you know they run out. You know they um, they get damaged. Yeah, they can get mouldy if you leave them in your garage, but don't leave them in your garage. You know if they get scrunched up, yeah, they can you can have trouble playing. But I've got a video. I recently bought a video of. Uh, Death Cruise, a uh, 70s TV movie, and that was on video, and I think that was released on video in the 80s. That still plays perfectly fine, you know. So all this talk about, old oh, videos are going to be unplayable because, well, this, this video is about over 30 odd years old, almost 40 years old, and it still plays fine. So don't believe the hype. You know, it's all about control. You get everything online. <laughs> uh, it, you're, it's easily controlled, isn't it? and traced, tracked, traced and databased, but enough about that. So videos, VHS, I still love VHS, I still love physical media and I will continue to love it as many of you do and hopefully, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'll have my own video shop one day, that will be great, my own video shop. 
So there we have it, VHS. What do you think? Do you think we've lost something by not having video shops anymore? Uh, I think you can, you know where I stand on that. I say yes, we have. We've definitely lost something in the community and we've lost something special about films with physical media. But you can still get hold of them, you can still buy VHS on eBay, you can still hunt them down. Uh, charity shops won't take them anymore, it's, they're getting harder to find, which is making the prices go up. But, um, but VHS, I love them. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.